the actual sample will be one of the possible samples in the sampling distribution. While we're looking at this diagram, let's um, mark off um, a boundary point down here and a boundary point up here. And let's think about the probability that this, of the sample statistic falling in that area. Maybe we could mark off a point right here and a point right here. So let's think about the probability that the sample statistic will fall between these two boundaries. Well, that probability depends on the percentage of possible samples that are in this area between these boundaries. If 70% of the possible samples are in this area, then there's a 0.70 probability of getting a sample from this area. If 80% of the possible samples are in this area, then there's a 0.80 probability of getting a sample from the area. So basically, the probability that the sample will come from this area between these two points depends on the percentage of samples that are, that are in this area. Let's maybe take a guess that 70% of the possible samples are between these, those two boundary points. Well, if 70% of the possible samples or 70% of the possible combinations are in this middle area, then there's a 0.70 probability of getting a sample from this middle area, which would mean that that this distance and this distance would be the 70% margin of error. Like I said earlier, um, the 70% margin of error is the distance from the population parameter to the boundaries of the area in which the sample statistic has a 0.70 probability of falling. Now let's look at um, another diagram. Now let's mark off this point down here and this point up here. And let's say that 95% of the possible samples are between these two boundaries. Well, if that's the case, then there's a 0.95 probability of getting a sample between these two boundaries. And the, and the two distances would be the 95% margin of error. Um, in this diagram, I'm just uh, helping you uh, get an idea of where the probability comes from. The probability that the sample statistic um, will fall in a certain area depends on the percentage of possible samples that are inside that area. So um, let's now move on to how the margin of error is actually calculated. So these are the steps to calculate the margin of error. First, you have to select um, confidence level. The, the confidence level is the probability that the sample statistic falls between the lower and upper boundaries. The confidence level is just the probability that we've been talking about. It's the, the probability that the the sample statistic will fall um, between the lower and upper boundaries. So the first step in calculating the margin of error is actually picking what you want the confidence level to be. If I decide that I want the confidence level to be 0.70, then what that means is that I'm going to be calculating the distance um, to the boundaries of the area that has a 0.70 probability. And I'm going to get the 70% margin of error is my answer. If I decide that I want the confidence level to be 0.90, then what that means is that my goal is to calculate the distance to the lower and upper boundaries of the area it has a 0.90 probability. And I'm going to end up getting the 90% margin of error as my answer. So 
when you're um, selecting the confidence level, you're really just selecting which margin of error you want to calculate. You're deciding if you want to calculate the 60%, 70%, or maybe 80% margin of error. There's a, um, when, you, when you're taking a sample from a population, there's a different margin of error for every percentage between 0 and 100, and any of them could be calculated. And it's actually up to you to decide which one you want to calculate. Once you picked your confidence level, then, and you know which margin of error you want to calculate, then the next step is um, actually calculating the margin of error using a formula. The next step is using the margin of error formula to, act, to get the margin of error that you want to calculate. And the margin of error is calculated by multiplying a value called the confidence coefficient by the standard error, which is a value we've already been talking about already. So the formula for margin of error is just confidence coefficient times standard error. And the, the confidence coefficient actually um, isn't calculated with the formula. Instead, a person just looks it up in a table. A person um, who wants to calculate the margin of error can go to a table and just look up the confidence coefficient to plug into the formula. The standard error over here has to be calculated with the formula based on the data. So um, when you calculate the margin of error, you look up the confidence coefficient in the table, you calculate the standard error with the formula, and then you multiply the confidence coefficient by the standard error. Now let's talk about how you actually look up the confidence coefficient in a table. Um, there's the table that allows you to look up the confidence coefficient that you need for your selected confidence level. And the table has um, several rows. Each row is a different confidence level. And when you go to the table, you go to the row for your confidence level, and then you um, and then you go over here to get your confidence coefficient that you need. If I want to calculate the set 70% margin of error, I would just go over here and get this confidence coefficient and plug that into the formula. If I wanted to calculate the 80% margin of error, I would go over here and get my confidence coefficient and plug that into the formula, and so on. So the, the confidence coefficient that you pick from the table actually determines which margin of error you will calculate. If you pick the confidence coefficient for 95% confidence level and plug that into the formula, you'll get the 95% margin of error. If you take the confidence coefficient for 99% and plug that into the formula, you'll get the 99% margin of error. Like I said, the confidence coefficient that you pick from the table determines which margin of error you will calculate. Um, so now let's actually um, go through a few examples of calculating the margin of error. Um, I said right here that we would look at how to calculate the margin of error for a sample mean and for a sample proportion, which are two different statistics. But actually, in this video, we'll just look at an example of the margin of error for a sample mean. We won't look at um, an example for a sample proportion in this video. So before we um, calculate the margin of error for a sample mean, let's look at the, the formula that we're going to need to use. We're going to need a, this confidence coefficient right here, which is um, with the letter Z stands for it, with this subscript right here. The subscript is actually alpha divided by 2. Um, don't worry about 
the, the subscript is just a notation. And this right here is the standard error that we looked at in, in an earlier video. We talked about how um, when you're sampling from a large population, you can use a short version of the standard error formula, which just has the population standard deviation sigma and the sample size in. That other part is uh, left off. And when you calculate the margin of error, there's always, there's actually always um, some requirements that you have to follow, or some rules you have to follow, in order to be able to calculate the margin of error correctly. If you don't follow those rules, then the formula will actually give you an incorrect answer. When you calculate the margin of error for a sample mean, the rules that you have to follow is um, are you need to be taking a random sample, and also either the population that you're sampling from has to have a normal distribution, or your sample size has to be at least 30. Let's talk about the reasons for, for these rules. Um, you have to have, you have to be taking a random sample because if you're not taking a random sample, <clears throat> if you're taking a non-random sample, there's no way to actually predict how much error you will make because um, it all depends on um, how biased the sampling process is. The, the amount of error that you're likely to make is only predictable if you're taking a random sample. That's because when you take a random sample, the sample statistic is likely to be um, at least fairly accurate, and extreme samples are less likely. Um, the reason for this other rule right here is because um, in order to calculate the margin of error for a sample mean, the possible samples that make up the sampling distribution have to have a normal curve or a normal distribution. And the sampling distribution is normal if one of these two things is true. So now let's look at this um, example right here. Let's go through an example of calculating the margin of error. Let's look at this scenario. A person wants to estimate the mean height of a certain city. The person knows that the population standard deviation is 2.3 inches. In other words, the person knows that the standard deviation of all heights in the city is 2.3. But the person doesn't know the shape of the population. The person doesn't know if, um, if the heights in the population are skewed or uh, bell-shaped or some other type of shape. The person takes a random sample of 40 people, records their 40 heights, and then calculates the mean of the height of the sample. The person calculates the sample mean by adding the 40 heights and dividing by 40. And let's think about, um, in this situation, can a margin of error be calculated to get an idea of how accurate the sample mean is likely to be? Well, we have to check our rules and see if they're followed. We have a random sample. The question says it's a random sample. And we don't know whether the population has a normal distribution, but we do know that the sample size is 30 or larger because 40 is 30 or larger. So we can check off both requirements and the answer is yes, we can calculate the margin of error for whichever percentage we want, or whatever confidence level we want. Let's say we want to set the confidence level to 95% and calculate the 95% margin of error. Well, the first step to do that would be to look up the co our confidence coefficient. We would go to our table and go to 95% and then get our confidence coefficient. Um, you this table is actually online. You can look it up if you want to. Um, I might send it out through email, but for, in this video, I just decided to post the uh, create my own version of the table and put it on the slide. So the confidence coefficient for 95% is 1.96. That's the number we'll need. 
The next step is to actually use the formula to get the margin of error. So our confidence coefficient is 1.96. Our population standard deviation is 2.3. That was known to be true in the question. And our sample size is 40. Um, and if we go through all of this math, our answer would be 0.71. I didn't show all of the steps because I ran out of space, but if you wanted to work this out on paper, you would need to start with finding the square root of 40. Once you do that, you would just divide 2.3 by the number, and then after that you would multiply 1.96 by um, this number and get your answer. It just It would take about three steps. Our answer is 0.71. In this situation, the 95% margin of error is 0.71. Now let's look at a diagram to help us understand what this answer actually means. Let's, um, so that we know what it's t telling us. So, in this ex um, situation, we're taking a random sample of 40 people from the population. The mean height of the city is unknown, because that's what we're trying to estimate. But the standard deviation is known to be 2.3. The heights of the sample are recorded, and the mean height of the sample is calculated. The mean of the 40 heights is calculated. And here, we, in this diagram, we have the population mean that, that's being estimated which is the mean height of the city. We have a lower boundary down here and an upper boundary down here. And this area between the boundaries includes 95% of the possible samples. And there's a 0.95 probability of getting a sample from this area. And we know from our calculations this distance and this distance are both 0.71. Overall, we know that when this sample um, is randomly selected from the population and the sample mean is calculated, um, there's a 0.95 probability of getting a sample mean somewhere within 0.71 of the population mean. In other words, there's a 0.95 probability that the sample mean will end up being somewhere between 0.71 below and 0.71 above the population mean. So um, that, that finishes our example of the margin of error. Um, let's finish this video by just going over a few important points about the margin of error. First, um, when it comes out to a smaller number, a more accurate result is expected. In other words, um, when it comes out to a smaller number, uh, less error is expected. So the, when a person calculates the margin of error, the person um, uses the size of the margin of error to get an idea of how much error is expected. Also, when it comes out to a smaller it comes out to a smaller number when either the sample size is larger or the population has less dispersion. That's because less error is expected in these two situations. A more accurate result is expected in these two situations. Also, the margin of error can only be calculated for random samples, which is something that we um, talked about a few minutes ago. Um, that finishes uh, everything for this video. Um, I hope this gives you a, a good introduction to the idea of the margin of error, and um, just let me know if you have any questions.